right, he took the bait. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of clarinets, cats, and coffee. In today's video, I am going to walk you through one of my favorite methods of staying in shape. And I've actually used this for many, many years. And um, I actually started it in my first year of college. And every year I try to go through the entire book at least once. And that is the method of practicing Albert scales in, in the way that I was taught in my undergrad at DePaul. With, uh, with things starting to open up, many of my students and colleagues and and uh, myself included have started rehearsing again with ensembles, um, small ensembles, but still um, rehearsing again, which feels really good. Um, however, I think a lot of us are starting to feel a little bit of the fatigue that comes along with not really playing as much. And now I know many of you have uh, been practicing quite a bit, putting in more hours every day, um, but the 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 continuous playing that we kind of need when we're in larger ensembles um, hasn't really happened as as much as as we like right in the past year so um i really love doing the albert scale method on a daily basis oh luke you left okay well here i'll put the box down there maybe he'll enter maybe he'll sit next to me on the ground there um Anyway, so um, I'm just going to take you guys through the steps that I recommend um, for practicing the Albert Scale method. Now, it's hard, it's physically exhausting, but over time you will get better, you will build up the endurance, and you'll be able to get through it much easier, okay? So the first thing you got to do is get the book. Um, and you want to actually have a physical copy of the book and you want to actually be looking at the music instead of just doing it from memory because we are trying to train ourselves to be good at reading these patterns and transferring these patterns into our playing. So we've got to get that visual connection all through the physical connection as well. And so my favorite um, edition of the book is actually edited by my teacher from undergrad, Julie DeRoche. So I highly recommend you get this and use it to train your eyes. Now, the second thing that you should do, so like, you know, say you get your book and you've got it and what do you need next? Your metronome, right? <laughs> So I've got my little handy dandy metronome with all of the traditional little metronome markings. And I like using this because you can physically click this. And what's fun about having a clicky metronome? Well, when we utilize the two click method, you will see why it's called the two click method, right? <laughs> so um, have your metronome ready turn to C major. Okay, so you've got your metronome, you're at C major. Now the next thing you want to do is choose what your max tempo is going to be for the book. Okay, so what I recommend doing is taking the first several lines of this and take your metronome and find whatever your max tempo is for being able to sight read it at. Okay, That's 144. That was pretty comfortable for 16th notes, but the six tuplets, it was a little uncomfortable for. So I'm gonna set the max for six tuplets at 160. And I'm gonna go four clicks faster and set that as my max tempo, 192 for my 16th notes. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a, a little bit faster than I can think comfortably. And so, um, yeah, so we're gonna set mine at 160 and 192 for the entire book. This is about as fast as um, I can get my fingers to go within a, a 30 minute time limit. Um, so it's gonna be different for everybody. And so what you wanna do is just pick a tempo that is a challenge for you. 
I know you're wondering, oh, Callie, but what about all of these really difficult key signatures that I'm not super familiar with yet? Just to hold your horses, um, what, what we do here is, um, this actually brings me to the next thing. So you choose one key per week. You start at the beginning and it goes C major, A minor. Then you add a flat, F major, and then D minor. And each, every, every couple of weeks, you add a flat to the key signature. So little by little, you're adding more awkward fingerings and patterns. And by staying with one page per week, it gives you the opportunity to learn those patterns thoroughly and really ingrain them in your muscle memory. So when you actually sit down and get ready to practice this, you want to set aside 30 minutes to practice this. No more, no less. 30 minutes is, is like the magic number. It has worked really, really well for me in being able to ingrain these patterns into my muscle memory. So what I do is I usually have my phone, I turn it to airplane mode, I set the clock right next to me and I just start my metronome and I play through uh, play through for 30 minutes and it's basically 30 minutes of continuous playing using long tone air the 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 next part of this right is is to choose what your starting tempo is going to be and I typically start no uh, no faster than 60. In fact, I never start any faster than 60. And I recommend that, that you guys start either at 60 or if you can't quite play in time at 60 yet, start at a slower tempo. And so every single day I start my timer right there. I start my metronome at 60. I play through the entire page at 60. Now the first time I went through this book, I maybe spent the full 30 minutes just getting the entire page to sound good at 60. Once my 30 minutes was up, I stopped and I put it away. And so I would recommend um, you guys do the same thing. If you're not familiar with these patterns, if you're not good yet at staying with a metronome while playing, the triplet part is, was always really hard for me to stay exactly in time. And so if you're having those troubles as well, stay at your starting tempo for one or two days and make it sound really good. Be 100% confident. Think about your breathing and your embouchure and everything all at the same time. So let's say maybe one or two days has, has passed. You've spent your 30 minutes just getting it to sound really good at 60. Now let's say on day three, you sit down, you start your metronome at 60, start your timer at uh, 30 minutes and you retained all the information that you, you did the day before and the day before that, and you can get through the whole page of 60 within the first few minutes without making any mistakes. That's fantastic, because that means you can move your metronome up two clicks from that. And chances are, if you did your slow practice right, the next tempo should be not too hard, actually. So 66, if you literally go up, there we go. if you literally go up two clicks, to the next tempo, that's the two click method. That's all you do, right? So you just play through two clicks, play through the whole page again. If that sounded good, you can go up two more clicks. If the whole page sounded good again, you can go up two more clicks. Now, if you get to a tempo that you're stuck at, and there's gonna be those little chunks in, in, in these patterns, right, that your fingers are just a little bit tense, or maybe your air chokes off a little bit, those are gonna be the little spots that you wanna stay super focused on and review those, uh, those spots quite uh, frequently, right? <clears throat> So you wanna make sure you don't just gloss over this stuff. Um, really focus and really try to make it sound good. So you're doing your two clicks, you're going up, playing through the whole page, fixing things as you go along, making sure it's really sounding good and feeling good. Now, over the course of one week, you should be able to go from your starting tempo to your goal tempo, right? So your goal tempo is the tempo you set for yourself that's just a little bit faster than you can comfortably sight read at. And you've just spent how many hours, right? One, two, three and a half hours over the course of one week reviewing, 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 
ingraining these patterns into your muscle memory. So you get to band practice and you've got to sight read a bunch of stuff. You're going to be a lot better at sight reading over the course of time going through this book. And your endurance is going to be able to get you through that entire piece of music, right? So I, I just love this. I love this method. Um, it really does take a commitment, a long-term commitment to really doing this right and doing it really well. So do, do yourselves a really big favor and, and just, just go for it. I mean, it's, it's gonna, you're going to feel the results of this after one week and after six months, you'll be a master at sight reading. So have fun, you guys. I hope, I hope you enjoy this. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've, if you've gone through this already. And, um, yeah, all that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, a good rest of your week, and as always, happy practicing.